Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Adrian and today we are continuing building a one cylinder engine model. And now we're going to expand this model and we're going to look at the heat transfer. Now, if this is the first time you are watching this video, I highly suggest you go watch a previous video where we set up the one cylinder engine. If you've already watched that, then let's get started on setting up the heat transfer submodel. Now, hopefully by the end of this video, you will be able to generate data, which you can use to draw a schematic of the temperature distribution and heat flux across the combustion chamber wall. We will have some information on the wall temperatures on the gas side, the wall temperature on the coolant side, and a bunch of other information. And we'll also be able to generate data for a transient graph showing the heat transfer rate as a function of crank angle. Now these two graphs that, I'm sh that I've am just showed you um, is an excerpt from internal combustion engines by John Haywood. Uh, I highly suggest this handbook if you're very interested in simulating anything with regards to an internal combustion engine. I found this handbook very useful and I will link to this handbook in the description below. All right, so there are a lot of cases where it's difficult for you to know the internal surface temperature for a pipe or a combustion chamber. It is, it is quite rare that uh, the combustion chamber is equipped with thermocouples or the piston temperature plugs and thus it is difficult for you to know these temperatures during operation. Now, because of this, it's often just easier to use a program such as WAVE to predict the inner wall surface temperatures, which are ultimately used for the prediction of heat transfer between the gas, the wall, and the coolant. Now, WAVE has a simple engine conduction submodel, which we are going to look at today. And I'm gonna show you how to use it to generate this usable data. I'll go through a steady state example as well as a transient example. Now, the simple engine conduction submodel can be used to define a simple pre-configured conduction matrix of the cylinder head, the valves, the liner, and the piston. The submodel is often applied when there is little or no working knowledge of the in-cylinder surface temperatures at various operating conditions. Now for us, we have a one cylinder engine here that is operating at 6,000 RPM. So we're gonna look at the heat transfer for this specific case. Now the submodel uses a pre-configured matrix of conduction nodes for the cylinder head, intake valve, exhaust valve, liner, and piston to calculate the surface temperatures and heat rejection to the coolant or the oil. So we are going to assume the engine has an aluminum block and head. It's got stainless steel valves and it is cooled with a standard mix of a 50-50 water ethylene glycol. Uh, the piston is not actively cooled but does have oil splash from the crankcase. So first thing that we need to do is we need to input some conduction submodel inputs. And the first thing where we can go to start inputting these values is when you click on the cylinder at the right, at the properties window, we have structural conduction and you can see the structure is currently empty. So we need to go and create a submodel. And as soon as you do that, the window will expand to piston, head and liner volumes. And these are all set to auto and we are gonna keep it as is for now. We're going to edit the structure by clicking the little pencil button and then it expands to a bit more information that is needed in terms of the conduction submodel. We are going to input the following values. The thermal resistance between the piston and liner value here at the bottom can be left as at its default value of 0.005. We'll return later to this window, but let's first go and enter all the values for our valves as well. So when we select the inlet valve, we can again go and see that for the properties, the structure is empty. So we can create one and we can edit the valve structure by clicking on the little pencil button. So we are going to input this general properties as shown. And once done, we can exit and we can go back. And this is now for our inlet valve. Now we can go and select our exhaust valve and we can just select at structure, the valve structure, and it will be the same now for our inlet and exhaust valves. Lastly, we need to input some cylinder cooling information. So to do that, we again select our 
cylinder and we go to our cylinder structure, we edit, click the edit button. And now we need to input the information for the cooling conditions on the outside surfaces of the piston, cylinder head and cylinder liner. Now we can set the heat transfer of the piston oil to splash. That will indicate that the crankcase splashes oil up on the underside of the piston and this will provide a heat transfer convective coefficient value of 1170. We can all, we also keep the temperature value at 380 Kelvin of the oil and then we can also go and keep our cylinder head coolant at correlation with a temperature of 370 Kelvin which is the temperature of our engine coolant. The correlation option just indicate that a nucleate boiling assumption will be used to calculate the heat transfer coefficient which is only appropriate when nuclear boiling is expected to occur in the cooling chamber. Um, if this is not the case you will have to select the fixed value and set an appropriate heat transfer coefficient. Lastly for the cylinder liner coolant we are going to set a heat transfer coefficient which we are going to specify and that is going to be set at 2000. As I've mentioned, the settings that we've input here is assuming uniform cooling conditions with 370 Kelvin of, uh, as coolant temperature and 380 Kelvin of oil temperature. We can also change the piston heating ratio to 0.37 as well as our liner heating ratio to 0.37. And this essentially means that for engine friction heating, we assume 37% of total engine friction goes into heating the piston and another 37% goes into heating the liner. And that is basically it in terms of changing our engine properties for preparing for heat transfer calculation. When that's all done, we now need to go and enable our heat transfer calculations to be made when we press the little running man. Now to do that, we need to head on over to our wave solver here on the session tree. You can see wave solver one, we click on that and then we need to go to the right and you will see one of the tabs at the top is called outputs. So we select that and then at the outputs tab, we go and we add an output and we just go and we select everything under conduction so that that will be included in our results file that will be generated. The last thing that needs to be done in the wave solver is also to select our structural conduction solver. So we press yes, please. And we keep the values of the standard tolerance and consecutive cycle converged as their default values. Now, before we go and press the running man for the solver to start, we need to ask that certain graphs be generated as well. Now to do that, we will go again, click on our cylinder and we click on the outputs tab and you will see from last video, we had the pressure graph as one of the outputs. And now we need to go and add a few more. So I'm going to delete my pressure graph and I'm going to add some more. And I want the cylinder head gas side wall temperature, which is 267. I'm also looking for 268, which is our cylinder head interior wall temperature. And then lastly, you've guessed it, 269, which is cylinder head coolant side wall temperature. One other graph that we are specifically interested in is our heat transfer rate. And you can see that that is graph 137. So we press OK. You can see on the outputs table, there's the four graphs listed that will be generated. And before we press solve, we need to make sure that we save our model. So do go do that now. After you've saved it, we're going to go and we're going to press the running man to get the solver started. Once you've completed the, oh, once solver is completed, we can head on over to wave post. And as similar to the last video on the right, we have a list of the four graphs that we've requested. Now, if we double click on one of the graphs that we've requested, the cylinder head coolant side wall temperature, you can see that it bounces a bit around on the screen, but then it's sort of stops here at 0 0.08 seconds for the value of 453 Kelvin. Now for the criteria that we've given it, it has assumed that it converged because of the values, the difference in the two va consecutive values are small enough. And if this difference is unacceptable to you, then you can change that values in your solar settings. But for this example, this is sufficient. Now, if we go and we right click on our cylinder and we view summary data, 
we can see a lot of information is given from approximately line 15 to line 34 and we get a nice heat transfer rate of approximately 8810 watts we can scroll down a bit as well and then right at the end we if we look at the liner specifically we get a liner gas side wall temperature of 560 kelvin a liner coolant side wall temperature of 532.08 kelvin and a liner interior wall temperature of 546 kelvin now using those three values we are able to generate a steady state temperature distribution over the liner of the engine now you can do the same with the piston and you can do the same with the piston head those values are given to you and we can get steady state temperatures for those three parts of the cylinder now we've also requested that uh, the heat transfer rate graph is generated and this is the result that we end up with which is in kilowatts and you can see from the start of oh, some of the heat transfer rate is negative which indicate that heat from the coolant is given to the gas or the air entering the cylinder and then as soon as the inlet valve closes this the air gets compressed and it heats up and as soon as it combusts there is a big positive heat transfer rate from the gas side to the coolant side that decreases and then you get this very steep step change as soon as your exit valve opens now why does this happen because in the graph i showed at the start there is definitely not a step change but here there is one evident when as soon as the exhaust valve opens now un to understand this we need to go back to our model and if we click on our cylinder and we go to the right top to our heat transfer sub model which we've indicated as the default convective heat transfer model and we go and we edit it by clicking a little pencil button you will see that we've selected the model type which is load compensating washney correlation now if you click on it there's a bunch of others original washney washney with intake scavenging washney with intake scavenging and burn to bottom dead center and a bunch of other correlations that you can choose from if we're going to the help file of ricardo wave and we search for washney heat transfer we'll get this equation given for calculating the convective heat transfer coefficient and you can see it is dependent on a bunch of variables cylinder bore cylinder pressure cylinder temperature and characteristic velocity now for the state when the exhaust valve opens we can assume that the pressure and the temperature stays constant right before and right after the exhaust valve opens but you still get that step change in heat transfer rate so the only thing that's really possible that can really change in this equation is our characteristic velocity and below there is a big explanation in terms of how the character characteristic velocity is calculated but for understanding why there's a step change we need to go and scroll down to these two coefficients and you will see there's two scenarios for coefficient c1 during scavenging and when valves are closed and this is what's causing that step change if we assume the ratio vs vm is constant for both scenarios then just by looking at the two equations we can see that during scavenging that is when our valves are open c1 will have a much bigger value than when the valves are closed and by looking at that the value c1 the value of c1 influences the calculation of v subscript c which is our characteristic velocity and for situations where there's no combustion occurring c2 is zero which means the second part of this equation is zero so then our characteristic velocity will increase suddenly as soon as our valves open and that is what you see in this heat transfer rate as soon as our exit valve opens that value of c1 changes it becomes bigger and that influences our convective heat transfer coefficient that ricardo wave uses in the washner correlation which results in this big step change in the heat transfer rate and that's it that is how you set up your engine simulation in ricardo wave to calculate heat transfer you can go and have a bit of a dig through all the other heat transfer results that ricardo wave calculates i've only touched on a few but it is is quite a useful tool especially like I mentioned at the start, if you don't have that experimental data, you can use simulation to estimate those wall temperatures. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, do not hesitate to put them in the comment section below, or you can connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. 
my Twitter handle is at ASVN90. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.